What time in your life have you felt the most protected? That's an interesting question. I'm gonna get disrespected anyways. anyways. Nobody's gonna Nobody's listen, gonna so why should I? Watch. So my downward so my spiral, spiral happened. Do you feel like you've missed out on your child? Things, things don't go the way that you want, want them to go all the time, but I just have to keep on pushing. What hurts is that I've grown up without my parents. Mm. From your vengeance, your vengeance as someone your watching, as someone did you say to yourself, yourself I have been I replaced have been from death and shock? Ladies and gentlemen, I need you to be seated. Do you know why? The Dr. Wendy Show is back. It's 2024. And we have a guest who is not only a mother, who is not only an actress, who is not only a founding member of one of the most historic girl groups ever, who also has Grammys. Do you understand that was plural, not singular? Grammys, the one, the only, Latavia Robertson. Excuse me. I'll give y'all two seconds to gag. Just two. Then we're going to get right into it. You're done. Latavia <laughs> Roberson. Miss Wendy. Ma'am. Hello. How are you? How, how can I not be great? How can this not be amazing? It's 2024 and you are sitting in my studio and we're yes, having I a conversation. Am. Yes, we are. I can't believe this. Well, believe it, honey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Emphasis. Um, listen, I have so much I want to ask you. I just enjoy your spirit and I enjoy the woman that you have become. And I say that because I feel like I grew up with you. What? I, Me? Yes. I remember dyeing my hair red and getting a whooping. <laughs> And my mom, my Nigerian mom was like, what is this? And she didn't understand why my hair was red. I understood. Because I saw this beautiful young lady on my TV. And out of everything that was going on, I said, oh, they're cute. But who is that? So that's how much you have impacted me. The first time I've ever colored my hair. And y'all know I love wigs. All <laughs> colors. All them colors. But the first time I altered the physical appearance of my hair was because I saw you. Oh, wow. That's that's the impact. I probably would have been leered down too, but uh, <laughs> my daughter just cut her hair off like last year. Oh, really? Like, off. Into a bath, Like, off. Oh, my God. I just, I didn't even leave out of my room. I, I did I didn't think that I could handle it. But mm. you did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, okay, no, so he wasn't that. No, I didn't. Nah, I didn't. Nah. <laughs> so let's talk about where I met you as a young lady. And it's funny because if my math is correct, you and my sister are the same age. So I really, really looked up to you because my sister looked at you as peers. Mm -hmm. And I looked at my sister as she's the pinnacle. We're three years apart. Anything my big sister did, I wanted to do. But that's where I met you. Mm -hmm. And now I see you here today. So let's start from the beginning. You're from Houston. I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> H-Town. And you came into the spotlight at a relatively young age. I did. But what I think a lot of people may not know <clears throat> is how we were introduced to you was not necessarily what you wanted to do, so to speak. Correct. Because if I'm not mistaken, you want to be an actress. I did. I started off, my mother signed me with a modeling agency when I was like six. Mm -hmm. And so photo shoots, 
a lot of print work for different magazines, mm -hmm. modeling shows, mm -hmm. commercials. I was the face on the Just For Me perm box for over 10 years. What? Yes. Yeah, come on. Yes. Did you have the bang? Was that tight curl? It, no, I didn't have a bang. Okay. It was just a ponytail all the way to the front. I know that. And I had a bun. That's okay. So long. The ninety, the nineties were a time. I was a baby. <laughs> I was a baby. But uh, that's why I started and through my modeling agency mm -hmm. is how I got the audition okay. for the group that okay. became Destiny's Child. Okay, so when you say the group that became Destiny's Child, is that because when you guys started, it was one of the first names was. Girls' Girl time? Mm -hmm. Okay. But there was different iterations of Girls' time. Yes. So was it the group that we saw as Destiny's Child that came? That's the group that was introduced to the world. Mm. Yeah, we had gone through like a lot of members and a lot of changes. Became Destiny's Child. Mm. Hit the road. Toured. But how did you get into Girls' time? Like, through the modeling agency? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, a, it was a group of women. Mm. And they held auditions. Okay. For they wanted girls of different authentic backgrounds. Mm. And we all went mm -hmm. to this building. Three lines of girls. We auditioned. Whoever got called back, got called back. Then solo song. Mm -hmm. And that went on for years. And like people don't realize that it took us eight years to get a record deal. So you didn't get a record deal until... Now y'all know I talk about this all the time. Math is not my thing. So I'm about to throw out a number. Don't. Don't flip me. Listen. So y'all didn't get a record deal till you were 15? Yeah, 15. So, well, I might have been 15. The girls might have been 16. Okay. You were the youngest in the yeah. group. We're all the same age, but okay. I'm the baby. Oh, you're the baby. Yes. So how was it being the baby in that group? Did it change anything? Did it make you feel no, like you had to because do because I have an old soul. Uh, <laughs> nobody puts a baby in a corner. I, hello. <laughs> check that. Dirty dancing. Okay. Um, okay. So you have an old soul. So you still felt like you still fit in with yeah, the Yeah. And I mean, I pay attention to detail. Like, I don't care how young I was. Mm -hmm. I'm staying some grown folks business. You know, when you feel, and not like that. Mm -hmm. It's just because when you feel like you have to protect yourself so much, mm -hmm. even being a kid raised by a single mother, mm -hmm. and you feel like you have to fend for yourself sometimes. So mm -hmm. I was I was always on my toes trying to pay attention. Because mm -hmm. um, people try to take advantage of women, young girls. Mm -hmm. I've been taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. um, you know, by my stepfather. So even that, my guard was just always up. Mm -hmm. So no, so no matter what, I'm like, I gotta stay on top of things. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna pivot for a second, <clears throat> and we're gonna go back to that timeline. Oftentimes, when I hear stories about you, or I read about you, or even preparing for this interview, mm -hmm. one word that kept on reoccurring was you didn't feel protected, mm -hmm. and that really touched me mm -hmm. because. As a woman, as a woman of color, as a mother to three kids, and now especially to my four-year-old daughter, I always feel like that quote from Malcolm X that says, Black women are the most disrespected species in the world, I think is so true. I do too. And I don't, you know, when, you know, it's like every time it's like she, did, she wasn't protected. She wasn't protected. So I have two questions for you. Mm -hmm. What time in your life have you felt the most protected? That's an interesting question. I can't pinpoint it. Mm -hmm. I mean, probably right now mm -hmm. at 42. Mm -hmm. And it's just because it's been so much... BS and so many things have happened mm -hmm. that I realize now that if I'm not going to look after myself, and there was a time that I let it go to where so many things happened, I'm just like, F it, I don't, I don't care. Right. Like, it's, it, I'm going to get disrespected anyways. Nobody's going to listen, so why should I care? Mm -hmm. And so my downward spiral happened and went under the rock and you just have to crawl yourself out and it's so hard it's still a day by day thing mm -hmm. that I deal with nothing I'm not gonna say no one nobody nothing is perfect 
And the more that I realize that, the more subtle that I can be in my sphere because I don't have expectation of man as much as I used to. Mm-hmm. I feel that when I lean solely on man and really not use my faith, mm-hmm. then I'm going to be disappointed almost every time. Right. So I realize that people are fickle and things happen and there's nothing that I can do about it. All I can do is try to be true to myself and value myself. So then it really won't matter as much about the outside and what people think because mm-hmm. that wall that that wall is up against y'all. Hmm. You say people are fickle and value yourself. So going back to that timeline <clears throat> of where we were, 15-year-old Latavia, you got this record deal. Y'all about to be the biggest thing out of Houston. Do you feel in that moment when you were going through it, did you have a vision for what you wanted out of it? Like, did you say, we got our record deal and I want to be insert blank. I want to achieve insert blank. Or was it just like, we got the record deal and I made it. To answer your question, Wendy, it wasn't that um, I felt like I, 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 I made it. Mm-hmm. I want to do this. Mm-hmm. From the moments that we prayed together for our record deal mm-hmm. and all that, I was with my sisters. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, no, we made it. Mm-hmm. We're going to do this together. Mm-hmm. And at that time, that's how I felt that it was going to go. That's what I wanted. That's mm-hmm. what I, now that's what I wanted. That's what mm-hmm. I prayed for. It's for mm-hmm. us to do it together. Right. You, are, you know, one thing we share in common is I'm a woman of faith. Uh-huh. And I feel like you're a woman of faith. Even here, you just talked about, let me tell you something. The way I love my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because I feel like even when things happen that are not things that we want to happen, uh-huh. it's part of his plan. Oh, yeah. And I know you often talk about, I believe it's called Prayers That Avail Much. Yes. That was the book. That you guys reference. So for those who don't know, t- t- talk a little bit about that. Okay. Uh, prayers That Avail Much. Go check it out. It's a book A book that has three different volumes of prayers. Mm-hmm. And you go through mm-hmm. the different chapters. Like you choose, mm-hmm. okay, if you're feeling adversity, then mm-hmm. there's things that you read about adversity in that. And then there's a prayer and then you read it. And we would do together. The prayers are fairly long, which mm-hmm. I like. It, and it just talks about the subject. One of my biggest ones is fear. Um, mm-hmm. Fear for me, what I do with my life a lot, I... Fuck it, fuck everything and run. <laughs> like that, that, that was my MO. Mm-hmm. I still deal with that to this day. Mm-hmm. And so prayers that avail much is just a way. And then, you know, I whatever I'm feeling, I might read two or three prayers. It mm-hmm. just depends on what mood I'm in, and mm-hmm. then I'll write about it. So it's, you know, it's not, I don't do it every single day, mm-hmm. but I mean, I I talk to God all day. All day. About should I make this list? Should I go the same way to the grocery store every time? Should I take the other way? Like you just never know. I talk about the stupidest stuff, mm-hmm. but I have to keep him involved in everything I do. So God is a thread that runs through your life. Yes. He so, has to be. So tell me, we're still at 15. We've gone from seven to fifteen, from girls' time to Destiny's Child. You're 15, you get the record deal, you've been praying to God, and your faith has been something that you've had since youth, I'm guessing, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. You've had it since the since youth, so <clears throat> oh, you now have a prayer and answer. Yes. Uh, answered prayer. Yes. Tell me about the time you first heard yourself on the radio. We were dropping Solange off at school, and it came on 97 on the box. And we just heard it and we stopped and we were just running around the car screaming and Solange comes running out the school and we, we, we just lost it. We really, we could not, we couldn't believe it. Mm. We knew it was going to happen. We just didn't know when. And we just so happened to be in the car. Because if we were in the house, we wouldn't have been listening to the radio. Right. We probably watched the same out of bell or something. (laughs) But, (laughs) but we happened to be outside in the car. In the car. You hear yourself, mm-hmm. you hear your music, you're bumping it. Solange comes outside running. I'm sure she's probably like- She's screaming, she started screaming as well, running same house. That's sister. I was about to say, that's my sister, that's her friends. So now it's time for you guys to blow up. What I hear oftentimes, and what I think is interesting, and what I think is a testament to the woman you are today, is I often have heard stories about 
the way in which all of you really <clears throat> took your craft seriously. And you guys weren't just some overnight success. No. And that's even true from you saying that it started at seven mm -hmm. up until 15. Mm -hmm. But then when you guys got a taste of success, you didn't stop. You kept on working at your craft. Mm -hmm. And we had, we had to. Because once we got on the road, that was really pretty much it. That was it. Mm -hmm. So y'all wearing heels, mm -hmm. singing, practicing. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about how those times of honing your craft has made you continue to have the same work, work ethic now that you are an entrepreneur, you have your own business, and you have your own foundation. How do you link... <clears throat> that time to this time and what makes you say I have to continue to be the best? What links the time for us molding our craft mm -hmm. um, when I was in Destiny Child and that work work ethic, mm -hmm. us being that young, and I'm going to speak for myself, mm -hmm. it was definitely something I didn't want to do. Right. And I don't mean the single part of being mm -hmm. in the group. Mm -hmm. Who at 15 wants to be going to rehearse instead of doing going to six flat? Like, who wants to be doing that? Right. But we were focused and we were determined. Right. So that, along with like what I do now, I don't have to get up and take my kids to school and all that stuff. But I have to do that. I have to do interviews, whether it's on the phone, whether I have to get on a plane, whether right. I have to do. It's just, it's like, and it's, it's my job. Um, I've been blessed that I'm able to be my own boss. Right. So things don't go the way that you want them to go all mm -hmm. the time, but I just have to keep on pushing. Mm -hmm. um, where I am now, where I was last year and the year before that and the year before that is way better, even though down, mm -hmm. than I've been. Mm -hmm. So I've been through it all right. Mm -hmm. um, my better half, Ryan, is like, he's like, sis, is there anything we would be watching Lifetime Element? He's like, sis, is there anything that you say, child, I remember when that happened to me? I was you know what, well, you're right. He's like, there are like a lot of things that are even on TV that you be like, child, that only happened in movies. Oh, I remember that time. He was like, what has not happened to you? Right. I was like, I really don't know. But all that adversity mm. and I don't even look, it's so crazy. I don't even look at the good times that I had so much. You don't look at the good times? No, no, no. I don't mean like, like at all. The reason why I look at the adversity side of it is because those are when things are going great, mm -hmm. then they're going great. It's just like if everybody was doing what they want to do and had their way, then we'd all be doing something else, even at this moment. Mm. So I look at the adversity because the adversity has made me have to pull through and have to make me be strong. It's made me have to reach mm. in ways and it had to make me be creative. It had to make me say, hmm, well, how can I do this? You know what I'm saying? How can I make lemonade out of these limits? That's right. That's right. And you've had <clears> lemons. <throat> Excuse me. No problem. You've had lemons that you've openly shared, and we'll get to that. And I love lemons. That's so great. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. I love lemons. It's my favorite. I love candy. Oh my, oh my god! I just eat the lemons. You are so country. Who says that? <laughs> Only country people like lemon. Candy. Well, I am country. <laughs> like, that's my I favorite. I swear, I be thinking that I don't sound country. I'm like, oh my gosh, I said that real well. I hear myself. I hear that draw. I'm like, oh no, that draw. That, 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 that draws in the building <laughs> with us today, baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So you're 15. You're working at your craft. It's making you into the person who you will eventually become as you stand here before us today. Okay. But everything comes at a cost. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you missed out on your childhood? Oh, most definitely. You do? Yeah. I mean, but not for a bad reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't out here, you know walk in the streets no right. no disrespect mm -hmm. I'm not nobody hustle right, right. but I was doing some things that girls my age dreamed of doing they everybody sees the glitz and the glamour right now realizing no we were working like mm -hmm. we working so 14 no hour days all that no prom. no prom did you go to no. high school no I got out of school I got out of school in sixth grade and then our um, production deal mm -hmm. um, it ended up not working and then I got pulled out of school in the middle of 7th grade I haven't been to school since you stopped school at 7th grade well we had a tutor right. on the road and then eventually things started happening we stopped that I wanted to finish but things stopped okay. and it was to the point where when I got kicked out the group 
Mm -hmm. I went back. I got a tutor so I can do my SATs and all that. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> so, so, yeah, I miss out on everything. You miss out on everything. The homecomings, football games, pep rallies, all that. I, I, I wanted that. to be a part of the debate team. I didn't know what I was going to do. Wow. I liked school. I liked math, right. science, and English. Okay. And, um, and then, like you said, for whatever reasons, even though it's like, oh, my God, you got to have this, your high school diploma, your education. For whatever reason, in my case, the Lord said no. So I'm not going to question him, even though it's even though it's very easy, right. and I often do. But I have to let him know. I'm not questioning you because I don't trust you. I'm just human, Lord, and I know you know that. So you bring up questioning the Lord. You We talked about your faith, and you just brought up getting kicked out the group. Mm -hmm. You wake up. We all know for the most part the story, so I'm just going to... Thank you so much. Say, say what it you, is. Thank you, Black Jesus. Okay? Because I'm oh, sure... Because that story has my ass wrong. I'm sure <laughs> Latavia is tired of telling y'all. Girl, can you say that one more time? Latavia is oh, tired of telling y'all what happened. <laughs> so, Professor Wendy's going to give you the cliff notes. Okay? All right. So, Latavia is in her bed one day. <laughs> she wake up. Like most of us, she turned on TV because you know that's what you do. You turn on the TV. She looks up, she hears a song. The song sounds familiar, but the people on the screen look kind of different. Yeah. Two people look familiar, but then we got two others who look, in the words of Dr. Umar, suspicious. <laughs> so now we got four people. Latavia ain't one of them. Latoya ain't one of them. But they singing a song that she was a part of. How old were you when that happened? 17. 17. No. No. I turned eight, 18. 18. Mm -hmm. Can I just speak for people before I ask questions? That's wild to me. That you, you are a part of something. And if I, let me just clear this up. Y'all had not dissolved nothing. Like you were still a part of the group. Yeah, everything was, it, so Con that's like, like you said, that's bizarre. Conversations were supposed to happen. They haven't happened, Correct. but there was nothing formalized. Correct. And you were part of that song. Correct. Right? And so you see a video and there's two people on the vid. Can I just tell you something? I remember watching it on 106 in Park. Mm -hmm. 106 in Park. AJ and Free said, new Destiny's Child video. Of course, you guys set the tone, the tenor of the culture, of fashion, of style. So I'm like, okay, turn it on. Let's see what, let's see what Destiny's Child wants to give us. What they want to give us? I remember looking on the screen, I said, Who's that woman to the left? Was she a no shade? I didn't know she was a backup dancer. <laughs> I didn't know what she was. That was the that was the purpose. That's why it was so many people in it. To try to confuse so y'all wouldn't pay it to maybe, maybe miss it. Hold on. Wait. I never knew that. I never thought of it like that. I mean it didn't work, but so the purpose of the layout of that video. Well, so we would be a little bit confused. Yeah, so many people. <clears throat> but then there's still the breakdown, and then there's the four in the bridge with the dance routine, and then, okay, the cat is out of the bag. It's all good. I don't even need to talk about it no more. <laughs> oh, that, that adds a different thing. Yeah, you know it. what? I can actually smile about it. Um, okay, so, so. How did you feel when you saw that on TV in your 18-year-old head? You are part of Destiny's Child. You have made it. Y'all may have had some issues, but, you know, people have their issues. It wasn't like that. We never fought or anything. Like that. Right. It, it wasn't that. So just like you, mm -hmm. still to this day, mm -hmm. I don't know how I felt. I just felt numb and empty, confused, and like, okay, what's going to happen? Like, mm. what did, it's clear that we've been replaced. Is that, so let me ask you, from your vantage point, as someone watching it, did you say to yourself, 
I have been replaced yes. from Destiny's Child. Yes. You didn't say. Me and Latoya was sitting right next to each other. We were in Atlanta. And they said, we just heard, I think it was MTV World Premiere, Destiny's Child, Say My Name video. So we wanted to watch it to see what they did. We knew automatically who the, who they were. We could, we could tell automatically the ones that were supposed to be. Had you met had no. you met Farrah or Michelle before that? Oh, I met Farrah because Farrah was in the Bills, Bills, Bills video. Okay, so you knew them tangentially. Like you just I, I never met Michelle. Okay, okay. So y'all were beside each other. When y'all saw it, when mm -hmm. you and Latoya were sitting beside each other, you watched the video together. Mm -hmm. That's wild. And when you saw the video together, you guys looked at each other and was like... But it wasn't really anything to say. We didn't know what to say. What was there to say? Bitch, you fired me. That's what I was saying. I mean, I mean, that kind of was the only thing. I would have been. Say. I would, what you was this? <laughs> Latoya was like, "L, L." See that thing on it? I was like, <laughs> "Yeah." So, like I said, I don't. I, I, I get how it is to people and it's just like how can you just talk about it because it's like it's 20 some years ago and it's just like i i get it mm -hmm. it hurts the only reason why it hurts is not because i was kicked out of the group or mm -hmm. anything like mm -hmm. that what hurts is that i've grown up without my friends. Mm. They were my only friends. That's why every time I see girls trip, like I really get teared up. It's because Aww. no matter what, I will ne I will never have that. Aww. They went to high to, to college together and all that can come together. For that. that will not happen for me. I have to start as, you know, being older, which is something, okay, I have more wisdom and more knowledge, but to achieve something so epic mm -hmm. with the only three girls that you grew up with and to lose that, mm -hmm. that's what hurts. Not this spotlight. Like, I can give two shits about being on anybody's TV screen. Mm -hmm. I don't care. They just came along with the territory mm -hmm. of what God put in my lap mm -hmm. as my profession. You know, that's a good point. And I never <clears throat> thought of it like that. And I don't think any of your fans have thought of it like that. Mm -hmm. And it's really crystallized because we talked about the fact that you didn't go to high school. Mm -hmm. You missed out on your childhood. So you weren't able to substantiate your relationships by making friends in the playground yeah. or going to prom or being part of the basketball team or cheerleading squad. Your friends were Beyonce, Kelly, and Latoya, my sisters, Those and just sisters, and just think about how hard it is. So now all of this has happened, and it's happened publicly. So then, when you do start to be an adult and live your life, and you would like to have friends, I don't know why people want to be my friends. Do they want to ask me the questions that you just asked mm -hmm. me? Do they want to know? Oh my gosh, how does Beyonce look when she wake up? And, like I don't have time for that, so mm -hmm. I don't know. Who wants to be my friend for, for real? what? Or okay. whatever. That's why I let my children get on my nerves. No, no, no. You said something real, and I can relate to that because sometimes, not sometimes, all the time. And I was, you know, being on the show I'm on, being a political commentator, being a public figure, it comes with the burden because you do question when people want to be around you. You question if people want to be around you because they like you. Or do they like the access that your lifestyle gives them? Exactly. Because somebody come to my house, they be like, girl, you just want to stay here and watch Lifetime, HGT, HGTV, yes, and the Food Net? Yes, yes I, I am. Do. Faithfully. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Ain't nothing out there in them streets. Nothing. And for a little Look, if I'm not getting no coin, <laughs> I'm not coming out. And <laughs> Ain't no reason to be out there in these streets. Nothing. And for a little razzle-dazzle, we could do Netflix. Miss said, Ain't nothing out there in these streets. Okay. Though. A little razzle-dazzle. Mm -hmm. So... You lost your job. You lost your friends. What happens next? I'm in love. <laughs> you are in a relationship. So I packed up and I moved to Atlanta. Okay. Now, I don't want to speculate, but is this the relationship you had with Brandon from Jagged Edge? Correct. What is that face, Wendy? Because in my sister's head, that was her boo. 
Oh, sorry, uh, Ivy. Uh, uh, <laughs> My sister loved her some jagged edge. Okay, yeah. let me tell you. So, so you were with Brandon. Mm-hmm. Y'all were together for a long time. Yeah, about ten years. Y'all were together for ten years. Of course, nobody knew. Y'all were together for ten years. It ain't because I didn't want nobody to know, but you know how men are. Yeah. Did you, did you date anyone else in the industry while you were in uh, Destiny's Show? Mm-hmm. It was just him? I haven't had many relationships. I'm not one of those okay. people. I, okay. When I'm in, I love hard. I love And her. so I I don't have a problem with, I don't have a problem with mm-hmm. being mm-hmm. in a, mon- I don't have a problem with, mm-hmm. I, mean, I don't think it's natural, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I don't have a problem being in a monogamous relationship. I, if I'm going to cheat on you, I mean, I can go do that. I'm mm-hmm. not going to commit to you and waste my time and deal with your shenanigans. Because mm-hmm. men be acting like, they ain't got nothing. They bleed once a month, just like we do. Just so. <laughs> <laughs> that, we'll bring we'll bring Latavia back for our love episode. Yes, yes. Stay yes. seated. We we just scratching the surface. Okay. Okay, so okay. you you you're in love. You're in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. You're 18, 19 years old. A chapter of your life has closed yes. that has made it so you've lost sisters, friendship, business partner, and career. Mm-hmm. How do you recover from that? You don't. Mm. You 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 live life, but in my case mm-hmm. and in my circumstance, I was living life, but I wasn't living life. What do you mean by that? I was waking up and going through the motions. Insecurities, you know, my man is out on the road. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm by myself. Mm-hmm. I'm in a different city. Mm-hmm. I really don't have any friends, mm-hmm. and I'm just going through the motions. Do you think, because I'm getting context clues, y'all were together for 10 years, but maybe he wasn't as faithful? Oh, no, I, okay. don't, I don't think so. I mean, I don't, I mean, I've said in the other interviews, I, I mean, I, 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 and as I look back, I know I, I when oh my gosh, we're supposed to this and this and this. Brandon was in his early 20s and traveling as well. There was no way. Mm-hmm. Now, it, him loving me even to this day mm-hmm. is not talk to him before I left. Like mm-hmm. th- that's not uh, that's not mm-hmm. the, the the question whether or not he loved me mm-hmm. or not. It just we were we were kids. Do you think that because you had a limited amount of people in your life who loved you? that that made you stay in a relationship even though you knew he wasn't faithful? Like, would you have been quicker to let that go if you had- Well, it was my first so love. So your first love. I, it, it was, I guess, harder mm-hmm. in, a, in a certain, to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't think about leaving. Mm-hmm. But you know, the further along in a relationship, then things start to hit the surface. And I, yeah. I'm getting older, I'm not getting any younger. Mm-hmm. And, it just we just mm-hmm. went our we went our separate ways. So one of my favorite rappers that I always <clears throat> talk about, my my love um, for music really originated with his album is Tupac. Mm-hmm. And one of Tupac's poems that I love is "The Rose That Grew from Concrete." Mm-hmm. How you can be surrounded by negativity, how you can be surrounded by bad things, but out of those things you still come out and you're as beautiful as ever. But before you come out. You have to be surrounded by bad things. The reason I say that is you also had a stint of alcohol abuse, Mm -hmm. drug abuse, Mm -hmm. and also being in jail. Mm -hmm. What was that moment for you? Was it, how was that moment for you while you were living it? It was... I guess to a certain extent, it, low, mm. low, not realizing it, kind of think you're having fun, drinking, you know, mm. smoking, all that, hanging out with my friend Sarah, she used to give me all kind of trouble. And you think you're having fun, but you're really trying to mask pain. Mm-hmm. Not that, you know, me not having my father, you know, all this stuff, the group and mm-hmm. incidents with me and my mother and my stepfather. So all these things are just weighing on me. Here I am. I'm in my early 20s mm-hmm. and I'm basically in Atlanta by myself. 
Mm. So I'm sitting here trying to cope in mass pain. I'm okay, mm-hmm. girl, when you wake up, it's going to still be there. You're not doing anything to do it. All you're doing, you're sitting there. And anytime any kind of opportunity would come up for me, I would self-sabotage. I would get sick. So I didn't have to go. Like, shit, I'm rich. I ain't got to go do shit. It'll come to me when it's time. You know, like, it, it was that because I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to be around people. I didn't want to have to answer to anybody. I just wanted to be in my own pain and in my own misery. I'm like, you know what? I got a roof over my head. I can do this so it don't matter. Who were your caretakers? And I'm going to ask this. For who? For you. But <laughs> hold on, hold on, wait. I'm going to ask this question because anyone who knows me knows my kids are my rock. Like, they ground me. They've changed me in so many ways. Where was your mother? In Houston. Was she there for you? That's That question has many answers. Was she there for you in the way you wanted her to be? or And was she there for you in the way you needed her no. to be? No. Why? I don't know. I mean, I didn't talk about it. I didn't I didn't need anybody. I needed somebody. I didn't need anybody. Because there have been a lot of incidents and a lot of things that happened to where to try to answer all that in the time that we have, it won't permit it. Hmm. But the times that I needed the most and the times that I needed people to protect me, hmm. I was told that I was a liar. Hmm. Um even by even in the group, I was always nobody believed anything that I said. So I was very manipulative, manipulative. Mm-hmm. So when it started coming time for things to come up, why talk to somebody? Ain't nobody gonna believe you. Don't nobody, don't nobody cut for me. I'm the black sheep. I'm the one to get in trouble. So ain't nobody cut for me. Then f y'all. I don't need to tell y'all, but don't worry about what I'm doing. I ain't asking y'all for shit. So don't worry about me. I'm good. Oh, but you need something. Here you go. I got you though. <clears throat> Let me ask you this. I saw you, and I'm jumping ahead a little bit. I saw you at Renaissance. Mm. I saw you supporting Beyonce. I saw you in Latoya Dan. Um, to me, you come off as that person who supports their friends, oh, who yeah. supports their endeavors. I supported every last one of their projects, hands down. Have they supported your projects? Well, they really haven't had anything to support. (laughs) But hey, it's coming out. Only time will tell. Do you feel like they've supported you? And when I say they, that doesn't mean necessarily the members of that group or people I just named. But, you know, we're talking about your mother. I'm really interested in the mother-door dynamic. I wrote a whole book about it. Um, Because I, I talk about how I love my mother. She's a strong woman. I learned so much from her. But she wasn't the mother that I necessarily needed in mm-hmm. adulthood. Yes. She's a great mother for a child. Right. But my mother's me. wonderful with my children. Mm-hmm. And within the last few years, my mother has um, revealed to me, and it made a lot of things make sense. It still doesn't change the simple fact that when you feel like you need a mother and they're not there in it. I don't take, I believe that all mothers love their daughters, in my case. Yes. Sometimes they just don't know how. Mm. And my mother <laughs> has revealed to me in the last few years, um, like I said, not to get her off the hook or mm. anything for not being there when I really, really, really needed her. Mm. Um, it would have changed a lot of my decision making. I definitely know that. But my mother let me know that my grandmother wasn't one to hug them and nurture mm-hmm. them. I was, so she didn't know how. Mm. So it made me understand it doesn't change what happened when I was mm. eight, mm. seven mm. years old. But it gave me a clearer understanding of her struggle. So now that you are a mother to a daughter, are you making a conscious effort to take the things from your childhood that benefited you, but leave behind those things from your childhood that hurt you? Yes, I try. This generation is different. Yeah. Even the things that they do, they have access to a lot more. So that like, that damn YouTube, the internet is just my four year old son is iPad savvy. 
He know how to work it better than I do. Same. And, but they are a joy. And like you said about your children, having my daughter was a huge change in my life. And then I went back into depression. Like, it's just, mm. and I had two miscarriages. It's just, mm. and it's, just, it's I'm like, Lord, when is it going to stop? Can I get a break? Can I get a break? Do you believe in the saying that God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers? Yes, I do. Do you? Mm -hmm. I believe my skin real thick. Has your skin always been thick or because of what you went through, it has become thick? I believe it became thicker. Do you think you would have survived as a member of Destiny's Child if you guys came out when social media was around? Because you guys came out a time when social media wasn't around and you weren't scrutinized by millions and millions of people. That's hard to say. Because really with the way that things went, I mean, scrutinize. I mean, people were gonna. Have, people had their opinions back then. We just could. Everybody just couldn't see yeah. them. Yeah. I really think that it would have been the same. I, I think that there is no DC three. There is no Destiny's Child. Mm -hmm. There's Beyonce. There's Kelly. There's Latoya. There's Latoya. There's myself. Mm -hmm. I just still think that it would have. People would have done their own projects. Maybe come back together. It's nothing for me to. Try to even, my, my brain, I took my blood pressure medicine this morning. I'm not going to raise it trying to imagine no. what could have had and what it could have should have been. No, you should have. Um, right. Because I really, you know, I, I, it, it's hard to say. And with social media, mm -hmm. then there are more opinions. Who knows? Things might have got to people said. Then maybe we're right. going to start fighting for, for BS. Who knows? Right. But it's neither here nor there. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, as hard as I said before, as things have been, it's still been... It's my life, I know and can't right. nobody take it away. And I'll go ahead and take it for how it is. I'm breathing. Amen. There are countless times that I feel like you should have died that day, girl. Oh my gosh. And I'm Did still here. Did it ever here. get that bad? Yeah. Not because I overdosed. No, 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 with stuff. But then, like I said, you know, then their relationship, it, it, it's just always a, <sighs> always steam coming out right. somewhere. So I lately have just been trying to focus on the positive things, mm -hmm. even throughout the trials mm -hmm. that are arising mm -hmm. and that will arise. And I actually take great peace in knowing that times are going to get harder and just knowing that as I continuously grow with mm. God, that I'll get through it mm. because my mind is somewhere different, especially since this new year. Mm. I just, I needed a change mentally. Do you have any regrets? No. If you could do it all over again, would you? Yeah. And I could say sitting here today, in 2024, oh, I would have done that different, but I wouldn't be sitting here today mm -hmm. if I'd done things different. Mm -hmm. So, you did the hard chapter, that chapter of your life was hard, the drugs, the alcohol, the jail time. Yes, I'm glad I look good in orange. Girl, <laughs> baby, <laughs> let me tell you something. <laughs> Did you look cute, Elise? Did people know who you were? Well, they did like two weeks before I got out. On the third time I went. Not the third time? Yeah, girl, yeah. But I was a resident. No. <laughs> <laughs> but no, okay. they, that's when I, I cut my hair. was like, here, I cut it off Tony Braxton short. So okay. my hair is curly. So okay. they were like, girl, you got that good hair. So and they were like, you look like you do rich, uh, rich people drugs. Uh -uh. I was like... <laughs> rich people, I'm like, we all up in here, like. But really? it was. Do you do you keep up with any of your cellmates? No, but you know what? I learned. <laughs> no, but I learned a lot from the women in jail, especially the first time I went. Really? Yeah. Okay, give me something. One of the greatest lessons you learned. Well, it they they were so positive. Mm. 
because I was I was in a small part the first time I went, so mm-hmm. it wasn't mm-hmm. overly populated mm-hmm. like that. But we would talk, we would just share stories, and mm-hmm. they would talk about how things that they had to do to make like it was. It was I just learned mm-hmm. like y'all was strong. Everybody was real faithful, and mm-hmm. you know, with God, it was mm-hmm. it was cool. I never like feared for anything. Like now, there were people sometimes. I'm like, hey, girl, from this topic, we are gonna go whoop her ass. <laughs> Yo, y'all are ignorant. I see why y'all are ignorant. Jesus. <laughs> we're out. Now we're going to go with her ass. Uh, okay. <laughs> so you got out. Mm-hmm. Was when you got out when you turned a new leaf? No. No? Mm-hmm. Damn. Okay, so you got out. You were still doing the same things. No, nah, not the same. But So what made you transition? What made you close that chapter of darkness in your life and say i'm starting a new i mean i moved i've started a new plenty times mm-hmm. i probably started can, new tomorrow can you talk about that because i think that that's a beautiful lesson not just for women but <clears throat> for people how don't be scared to start over yeah and it doesn't have to be just one time yeah no and starting over doesn't mean that oh my gosh i gotta start back from i just went okay now let me go rework this a little bit Mm-hmm. I don't, okay, if I'm here and mm-hmm. I move here, mm-hmm. I might go back here, but I'm not going to go here. I'm just, okay, oh, I got here. Okay, I'm at least going to go this way. Mm-hmm. What I'm not going to do is go back, back here. That's the lesson. People is just like being addicted to heavy drugs. People relapse. Mm. It doesn't mean that you are totally off the wagon and that you're no good and you mm-hmm. don't have anything to offer society or mm-hmm. to the world or mm-hmm. to yourself. Mm-hmm. We are human. We have flesh. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, nobody is perfect. And I do not, I don't pain myself. I don't seek perfection. And I say it all the time because the day that I seek perfection will be the day that I stop seeking God. Mm. And if I do that, I'm shit. Mm. So you've started over multiple times. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I might start over tomorrow. I know that's right. <laughs> and now you are where you are in present day. Yes, I am. I used to be present, but not present. <laughs> but now I'm present. You know what? One of my favorite quotes is, you are here, but are you present? Yeah. Because lots of us walk through this life mm-hmm. being a shell. Yeah. But we're not living. Mm-hmm. Do you think you're finally living? Yeah. Um, and there are different ways that I want to live. Mm-hmm. I am definitely going to live better. I'm mm-hmm. going to live better for myself. I'm putting myself first now for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm tired of being a yes person, not because, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, I feel like I have to say yes. That is just like you scrunching up your nose because I said I'm Scorpio. <laughs> I'm one of the most <laughs> given, nicest people that I know. I love that. You are. And I, and I, I like the way that I am. Mm-hmm. I like that I'm sassy and sarcastic. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that I can be facetious. I love that I love. I love that I love hard. Mm. I love that I know how to be gracious. I know I, I love that I know how to be a bitch. Mm. And I hate when people take that away from me. Mm. I love that I love my children. I love that I love my mother. I mm. love that I love my extended family mm. that I have. Mm. I'm in love with love. Mm. But things don't always go that way. So I just try to wake up and breathe Mm -hmm. and just put one foot in front of the other that's all you can do yeah so we're in 2024 i've noticed a change in you in the sense of i see more of you um that's because ryan makes me (laughs) i see more of you before i feel like you were away from the world in a sense you were you were away from the world. No, but see, even going back to the group, me going through all that stuff, I was, it's inevitable that the things that I went through when I said I was underneath my rock, mm-hmm. it was going to happen. Okay. I'm glad that everything that I went through did mm-hmm. not happen in front of a camera. Mm-hmm. I got to live my stuff without having to be in the spotlight. So it made it easier, like you said, to come up. What made you change? Yeah. I didn't change. I just got to live it and get it out. So you were able to go through the grieving process, the loss process, all of that. But you got to do that in your own privacy. Yes. It was public enough because even in front of my family. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have that. It would have made it harder. Mm -hmm. 
Well, now, child, we see you on the shade room and you be hanging out with people on the shade room on New Year's Eve. I don't know. I saw a little picture. Um, put that picture right here. I saw a little picture of you with Kelly and Beyonce and Latoya and Michelle. That you did. I saw that picture. So, so you, you, you out here. Are we getting the tour? You tell me. Are we getting a tour? You tell me. Are we getting a DC5 tour? Not to my knowledge. Would you, if you know something and I don't know. Would you be up for it? <laughs> not doctor. Would you be up for it? It's, it's not that I'm not. Uh -huh. um, it's nothing that everybody else thinks about it more than I do. Okay. I have things that I have going on. Mm. I think that it would be more age appropriate for us to do something like a residency if anything happened like that. Mm. I'm not going to be out there shaking my ass and all of that. Like, I'd rather do that in the bedroom, honey. Not out there in front of everybody. I, I don't need but that. you can hit us with a nice little two-step. Mm. Get it. There's your boom. boom. <laughs> <laughs> no. I just want you to know the people want it. I know. The people are asking for it. I know. But you say you got things going on. I do. tell the people what you have going on presently because you have some amazing things going on. I do. Um, I have um, my Queen's collection. It's the makeup line, mm -hmm. and it um, and it is <laughs> and it is it's it's wonderful, and it, it goes back even to even the robes. I just believe that mm. all women are queens. Yes. A lot of my guy friends are queens. I know that's right. And we are definitely deserving mm -hmm. of nice lips, nice skin. Mm -hmm. It's just empowering women. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm all about it. I mm -hmm. want to give something to make women feel beautiful. Mm -hmm. We should all feel beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that goes into the foundation of La Papillon Foundation, which means butterfly in French. And you're talking that. about your favorite Tupac. Mm -hmm. Um, poem and the rose coming out the concrete. Mm -hmm. It's almost like La Papillon is butterfly. I love butterflies. Mm -hmm. And my foundation is about transformation mm -hmm. because you, and, and I look at myself, caterpillars are ugly mm -hmm. and they furry, they're on the ground and they crawl and they're trying to find their way. Mm -hmm. They find they were somewhere and they have to get in a cocoon. Mm -hmm. So you said all the time you didn't see me, that's where I was. In your cocoon. I'm still coming out of it. Okay. And so you transform. And mm -hmm. sometimes it takes people longer than others. But I've never seen an ugly butterfly. So it's about spreading your wings and becoming the woman that you're supposed to while supporting other young girls and us supporting each other mm -hmm. and just finding our way. I don't think that there's no, I don't think that there's a wrong way to live life. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's a right way to live life. Mm -hmm. I just think that you should live God uh, I live God. See, look, you up in there. Uh, I think you should just live your life according to how God and everybody. There's, there's a different faith or whatever for everybody. But for me, I live my life the way that I see fit in my eyes. But mm -hmm. I know that at the end of the day, it's up to God. Mm -hmm. So then it's about getting a good support system and doing that. And I also have LMR. Um, I'm getting into clothing and showing in New York Fashion Week. Yeah. And stuff like that. Yeah. So it's just a lot of things that I've wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, it be behind the scenes. Okay. I'm I I'm boss lady. Mm -hmm. So we have Queen's collection, yes. makeup. We have La Papillon. Le Papillon. La Papillon. Yes. My we, nonprofit. We have clothing that will be shown in New York Fashion Week. Yes. You were doing all the things. And I'm proud of you. Thank you very much. I know you did a stint on reality TV. I did. You did. <laughs> what is that face about? Doctor. Hell, doctor. Hell, doctor. Got his. So you did a stint on reality TV. I did. Oh, I was ready for that second season, too. What? It is. What? <laughs> what are your, what, what was your experience like? Honestly. You want me to be true? I don't have any other words to be. Um, interesting, which is one of my favorite words. <laughs> um, it's amazing how you can do something and be in your truth, mm -hmm. and then somebody take everything you did and misconstrue your whole situation 
I'm pretty sure that you know this. I, I'm pretty sure you can, um, you're picking up what I'm putting down here. Are you picking it up, Wendy? I have received it. Yeah, doctor, I have received, received it. it. In the name of I Jesus. I have received it. You think that you are doing something, and I get it. Mm -hmm. It is supposed to be entertaining, but there's a certain thing. You ain't going to take your entertainment mm -hmm. at the at the cost of my livelihood and how you going to make me look. And then when you come for yourself and then you try to tell and, and speak your piece, they block all that out, y'all. They production is bitch. So I understand it. Only thing I can do is go and give up myself. And so that's why the timid me that was on the first season of a reality show that I did, I was ready to get to the second season because I understand how the game is played. And um, I wasn't going to play any games. So I was ready. And then all of a sudden there was no more show. So Woo! I guess they knew <laughs> what was about to happen. Well, um, you know. And seen. <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, <laughs> you need to go get your coupons. You need to get your coupons. Let me run up and go get my cards. Um, I ain't gonna say much. Um, <laughs> you you said it all. I ain't gonna say much. No, you said it all. Um, y'all 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 gonna have me on this camera running over get my cards. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that. um, given that, and since you've done reality TV. And I'm all for it. And you're all for it. And that's why I'm creating my own. Right. So, so I can write so I can create my own there. Right. Okay. So you've done reality TV. You're all for it. You're beautiful. Thank you. You have a story to tell. I do. You know, I love you. You're my girl. Thank you back. Would you ever come on the Real Housewives of Potomac? I don't live. I don't know. I, I don't have a man. Would you ever join the Real Housewives of Potomac? I don't know. That's a loaded question. Because you know, I could use a strong friend on the show. Well, I could meet you up and visit you a couple <laughs> times, you know. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. We'll talk. Okay, we'll talk. We'll talk. Because um anything is possible. Anything's possible. Cause when me and Latavia gets to going, who knows what's gonna happen. Who knows? Okay. You, you never know. That's all that's all I gotta say. Okay. You wanna play a game? I don't like to play games. <laughs> we, don't play okay, games. we have a new segment. Mm -hmm. It is called 10 with Web, where I ask you 10 questions and you answer. Right. What if I have to think? L Latavia, stop playing with me. Okay, like, so come, I say on, pass, like, come on, let's go. Because they have to pass then. <laughs> Uh, but if I don't have answers, okay, what I'm you saying? Okay, you gotta get answers. Okay, okay. The people want the answers. Okay. These are good questions. Okay, here we go. Let me turn on my pack. All right, ready? <clears throat> God forbid, but if you were on death row, what would your final meal be? Gosh, it's crazy. I know what I like. But I have to be something hearty, so I'll probably do um, a steak, baked mm. potato, some asparagus. Mm. Okay. What do you do for self care? <laughs> I really just I like to light candles and just really relax in my bed. <laughs> yes, and it smells amazing. Oh, you have essentials, everybody. I am. I'm a candle junkie, but I just like to be in my small space. Okay. All right. What's the first thing you bought when you got famous? Well, we weren't actually famous, but I bought a cell phone. Oh, you got a cell phone? One of them little Nokia's. Oh, you got Nokia? The one that could change the color of the case? Yes. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! No. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was baby blue. Okay. If I gave you a million dollars today, what movie could you recite from beginning to end all the words? Not all the words. So, probably coming to America. Coming to America, yes. His mama ain't clean. It's, I'm going to clean. <laughs> <laughs> That's my movie. Okay. If you could have dinner with five people, dead or alive, who would be at your table? Oh, oh it's more than five. Dead or alive? Um, 
money. That that's not. It's not fair. Five people, and you, when people ask me these kind of questions, it'd be so mean. Like, what's your favorite song? I don't care. I'm not. I don't care about hurting nobody. I'm not trying to hurt nobody's feelings. I don't even care. I just don't know. Yeah. If somebody over you don't want me to say somebody, <laughs> I, and I get it, that person is there, but it's not. Okay. I would have dinner with Whitney Houston. I would. Oh, I love Nippy. Oh, I love um, Whitney. Oh, I would. That's my favorite. Right now, somebody that I'm obsessed with and I would love to play her in a never Jennifer Lewis. Oh, I, I absolutely Jennifer adore Lewis. her. Um, and I can see you playing her, actually. I, 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 I can see you have um, mannerisms I, in my I head. I do. Yes. I, okay. I, look, I have to say that. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, three more. You're doing good. I ain't trying to take forever, but it's gonna take forever. That's fine. We got Nippy, we got Jennifer Lewis. And it's just so many people that I like. Mm -hmm. Well, I watch HGTV. Okay. I want to eat with David Bronstein. Oh, okay. That's a good one. Okay, um, two more. Angela Bassett. Very good one. One more. <laughs> I'm making you mad. Yes. I'm making myself mad. <laughs> She really thinking about this, like we sending out advice tomorrow. That's the funny no, part. No, it's not that. It's just that like, cause as many movies and stuff as I like. Mm -hmm. uh, it's such a good question. Yeah, it, but it's like, I'm a movie buff. Okay. And so all of that. Okay, we going with your four. Thank okay, you. boom. Who is your celebrity crush? Ooh. I always, cause of the crystal blue eyes. I like um, Bradley Cooper. Oh, okay. I was about to say, did Bradley Cooper die? Okay, no, 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 no. Okay. I, would, I would just, okay. yeah, I, I Bradley, would just ask. Bradley him. Cooper is your I would, I would go. I would go. Oh, okay. Go okay, come on. Um, we like a little swirl. We sure do. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> because black women need love from everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Um, what past red carpet look do you dislike the most? Gosh, I was only back in 1942. Let me see if I can remember red carpet look. Or it could be an award show look. Something that sticks on your head that you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I wore that. I cannot, I do not. Me personally? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, once I, I don't do many red carpets after. Or it could be it, uh, the group, whatever. Probably after the group, mm -hmm. when we went to the Grammys as Angel. Yes, because it was you, me, LaToya, LaToya, and, and Nadi. Yes. Yeah. We. Backstory after Destiny's Child, after she was oh. given the boot, oh, she formed her own girl group, and it was her, Latoya, and Naughty. Naughty, yes, and they were a girl group. But you guys never released music. You guys no. recorded, yeah, but you never. It released got leaked, it. but it, it got never leaked. got okay. But released. you still went to the Grammys, mm -hmm. and you went and collected your Grammy that you were nominated for as a member of Destiny's yeah, Child. We weren't able to go. They had to send them. To Why us. weren't you able to? Child, it's a lot of questions back then about why I asked why, but I don't know. We, we, we got to go. You got to go, and but you couldn't accept it? No. Okay. Who's your least favorite artist? Uh, <laughs> Be honest. Who no. is, and, and I'm not here, but since you yeah. watch RHOP, who's your least favorite RHOP cast member? Well, just say that. I know you said that you're not here, mm. but even from me watching it, mm. I don't have... There's some situations that I know about and mm. some that I don't. Mm. But I have to be honest. Mm. What was said mm. about your mother, I, mm. I ain't like that shit. I, I, and I'm dead okay. serious. I put that on everything. Mm. I don't, like, I don't even know her name. I'm not trying to be mean, but it was, it was mean, especially if it's untruthful. And people have their opinions, but I don't think that it's right to go and spread something, especially about somebody's mother. It's my opinion. The people have spoken. Okay. And I really don't. Like, I'm not that person. Uh -huh. I know you're not. Because I could have said that I didn't want to answer it because I didn't. I don't. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't have to. Mm -hmm. But I just think that it was foul. Thank you. And my mother would appreciate that. See, hey, mommy. mama. You see, mommy. Hey, mama. You all, mommy. You got people out here in these streets <laughs> riding for you. Just know that. Know you are loved. No people know the truth about and you. And your mama said I would have prayed for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hallelujah. Oh, okay. All right, last question. This has been fun. If you could tell your 15-year-old self, 15-year-old self, one advice, and you could see her, you see her right now, mm -hmm. that young girl who had the world in front of her, 
so excited for what the future held. What would you tell your 15 year old self? Well, Tavia, you are a very talented individual. Own your confidence, own who you are. And as hard as it is, don't let what people think about you affect the way that you feel about yourself because you are enough in God's eyes. Oh, that was so cute. I'm about to cry. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> That was so beautiful. Thank you. That was so it's beautiful. Oh, okay. Our last game before I let you go. I could not have the founding member of one of the greatest girl groups ever on the Dr. Wendy show. And I asked her to play a game called Finish These Lyrics. Oh, she's gonna make me use my brain again, y'all. Gosh, I almost she just ask me questions that I and I'm just I'm gonna start off real easy. I'm gonna start off real easy. Oh, gosh. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna do the first part and I'm gonna point to you. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> me, me, me. <laughs> <clears throat> Come and talk to me. I really wanna meet you, girl. I, I really wanna know your name. Do, do, do. No. no. <laughs> Next. <laughs> okay. Next. You, one thing I know about you is, yes, you say you want to be an actress, but when you joined Destiny's Child and when you were in girls' time, you were a rapper. Yeah. People may not know that. Yeah. You were a rapper. <laughs> so, since you were a... <clears throat> since you were a rapper... Oh, Lord. You ready? Emma. Okay. <laughs> Pull up in the monster automobile gangster. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I like rap. I Nope. Uh, I listen to alternative and stuff like that. I promise you. I, you missed me with that one, doctor. Listen, if you know the history of that song. Hey, now you said, what, what's the hook? What's the hook? The hook is the main part. The hook of the song. The hook is like, no, 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 no. So that's the hook of that song. Okay. So no. We, what's the hook of that song? I don't think see, the song has a hook. It doesn't have a hook. The song doesn't have a hook. Even worse. Okay. Ooh, Dr. Wind. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, for those who know, y'all know why that lyric matters. So oh, it's Nicki Minaj. You know what? When you said that, it sounded like that. Oh no, I definitely. The, I'm, I'm a fan, but like, it's okay. It's yeah. okay. All right. Oh yeah. The older I get, the more that. Moving I, on. I, so we so, so we've done R and B. We've done rap. Okay. Melodies from heaven. Rain down on me. What? Rain, Rain down, down on me. Hey, melodies. Okay, all right, all right. We've done, we've done gospel. All right, let's do TV. Okay. In West Philadelphia. Born and raised. On the playground is where I spent most of my days. Chilling out, maxing, relaxing out, cooling out. All shooting some b ball outside of the school. When a couple of guys that were up to no good started making trouble in my neighborhood. I got it one little fight. And my mom got scared. They said, moving with your I see your uncles in Bel Air. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Oh, that was, everybody couldn't nobody tell me nothing about uh, Will Smith. When we did the Men in Black soundtrack, baby, oh, I, baby I got up on him and took my picture like that. 15 years old, being on Facebook, I was like, Oh, oh, Willie Smith, huh? <laughs> no, Willie Smith. Big Willie. <laughs> okay. Tavia Roberson, we have seen you at your highest highs. Yes. We have seen you at your lowest lows. Maybe. <laughs> and guess what? What? You're still standing. Yes, I am. And you are beautiful. Thank you. And you are everything and more. Thank you. And you know what? Before I let you go, I feel like we talk about people, how they're legendary, how they're icons, and... One thing that has always stuck out to me is you have to give people their flowers while they can smell them. Right. So I want you to know that we love you. Thank you. I love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for everything you've given to our culture. Thank you for everything you've given to music. And <laughs> we're giving you your real life flowers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, mama. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Let's
love you everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Like, subscribe, comment. Thank you for joining the Dr. Wendy Show. See you next week.